And what are we looking for? You know, we want, uh, we want income worth the risk. So we don't want, you know, great risk downside protection if there's not enough income. And it, it should be a stock or ETF that we're willing to hold. So if it's one that you go like, I never like this stock, I don't want to hold it, then I wouldn't trade a put spread in it. Um, we want to have um, dividends that are at least, div not div, I should have meant earnings, earnings about three or four weeks away. Because if we have to roll it, we don't want to be bumping up into earnings. So we want to make sure that we're selling puts that give us enough flexibility that if we do roll it, or if we take the stock and sell calls against it, we don't have an earnings event the next week or the week after. And we want to make sure that they have strong fit, uh, fundamentals and that we have good diversity among sectors. And what I mean by that is we don't want to have, say, all banking stocks or all tech stocks or all healthcare. We want to have a mix of everything. And one, one mistake that, um, that I've made in the past is if you have an ETF, say you have the Qs, and then you have a few tech stocks, well, you just doubled up on your risk in that sector. So you want to be careful that if you have um, you know, an ETF exposure, that it's not uh, kind of doubled in other stocks that you have there. And even you know, stuff like the S&P, there's like five or six stocks in the S&P 500 that account for about 30% of the holdings. So you just want to be aware that you know, particular ETFs might be really heavily weighted in, in particular stocks. And <clears throat> the criteria that I use is we always want to sell the put or the short strike beyond the expected move of the stock. So on the option chain, it will show us that this is going to, you know, it's a plus or, plus or minus 10 points for the move. We want to sell it further out than 10 points. Usually one and a half times is kind of my goal. And we want to look for low beta stocks. We don't want stocks that have a beta higher than 1.3 because what'll happen is if there's a market, you know, say the market corrects 2% and you have a two beta stock, then it's going to correct 4%. So we want to make sure that in the event of a sell-off, our stocks aren't going to move more than the correction in the market. And, <clears throat> and I want to look for the IV percentage, percentage to be between 30 and 80%. And we want it high enough to give us credit. But when you see a stock that has like a 85 IV on the individual um, expirations, there's usually something going on with that stock. Either it's a merger, if it's a healthcare, there's an FDA announcement pending, or there's earnings coming up. So if it's too high of an IV, I'd be really careful. And then again, we wanna sell our short strike well below the support level, no earnings within three or four weeks. And we wanna get at least 2% return on risk with at least 2% downside protection. <clears throat> and that kind of always changes based on the market environment. If IV shrinks, it's it gets harder to get 2%. If IV is higher, sometimes you can get four or 5% return. And um, I always like to, if I can get more than 2%, say I can get 6%, then I wanna go further down so that I have more downside protection. And I trade weekly options for the most part. So they give you a lot more flexibility. <clears throat> any questions about any 